Dressing up in costumes and trick-or-treating are popular Halloween activities, but few probably associate these lighthearted fall traditions with their origins in Samhain, a three-day ancient Celtic pagan festival. As leaves turn to oranges and yellows, temperatures drop, and you start to pull out sweaters and jackets, it's time to deck out your porch with pumpkins, get to carving and brainstorming Halloween treats, costumes, trick-or-treating, or perhaps an excuse to sip on a boozy. For the Celts who lived during the Iron Age in what is now Ireland, Scotland, the UK, and other parts of Northern Europe, Samhain, meaning literally in modern Irish, summer's end, marked the end of summer and kicked off the Celtic New Year. Ushering in a new year signaled a time of both death and rebirth, something that was doubly symbolic because it coincided with the end of a bountiful harvest season and the beginning of a cold and dark winter season that would present plenty of challenges. Before the name Halloween, it went by All Hallows' Eve and paid homage to Hallows, also known as Saints, just like the holiday set on the next day, All Saints' Day, which is November 1st each year. Before 7th century BC, All Hallows' Eve actually fell on May 13th, but it was eventually moved to autumn, perhaps in an attempt to offset the occasion with a religious celebration. Eventually, the triple word All Hallows' Eve got shortened to Halloween as we know it today. This week's magic... I'm going to go back to the wheel of the year. Yes, the holiday season. What do we have coming up? Samhain. Samhain, you say? What is that? Halloween? Heard of Halloween? Yes, it is actually the witch's new year. Indeed, it is, I think, our most holy of days. It is when we celebrate the dead. So how does Samhain and Halloween have together? They're completely hooked together in all my experiences. Um... People at Halloween dress up and put on masks because the veil is thin and they want to scare away ghosts. Same thing as Samhain, the veil is thin. It is the day when the veil is the thinnest. So the reason we carve pumpkins is in Europe, you used to carve turnips and whatever they had there to scare away the bad ghosts, to confuse the ghosts. So it really is a season all about celebrating the dead, knowing the veil is thin, and we've got Dia de los Muertos in the, in the Spanish culture. We have All Saints Days, what the Christians turned into is celebrating the dead. So this is the season to carve pumpkins, to do orange, to do all sorts of magical things that we're going to be doing anyway. Who knew it was a holy day? Some of you actually did. Halloween falls on October 31st because the ancient Gaelic festival of Samhain considered the earliest known root of Halloween, occurred on this day. It marked a pivotal time of year when seasons changed, but more importantly, observers also believed the boundary between this world and the next became especially thin at this time, enabling them to connect with the dead. This is where Halloween gains its haunting connotations. The early pagan holiday of Samhain involved a lot of ritualistic ceremonies to connect to spirits, as the Celts were polytheistic. While there isn't a lot of detail known about these celebrations, many believe the Celts celebrated in costumes Granted, they were likely as simple as animal hides, as they disguised against ghosts, enjoyed special feasts, and made lanterns by hollowing out gourds, hence the history of jack-o'-lanterns. Over time, as Christianity took over and the pagan undertones of the holiday were lessened, the basic traditions of the holiday remained a part of pop culture every year. They simply evolved and modernized. History.com notes that the Druids, or Celtic priests, thought that the presence of otherworldly spirits made it easier to make predictions about the future. At the bonfires of the festival, fortune telling was done alongside sacrifices, and many participants also downed costumes, often masquerading as animals or beasts, in hopes of fooling spirits who might want to harm them. The mystical rituals of earlier times eventually evolved into the more lighthearted fun and games we know as Halloween today. In Jack Santino's Halloween in America, Contemporary Customs and Performances, he explains how during this time, many of the Celtic traditions were reframed with a Christian narrative in an attempt to capitalize on the popularity of the pagan practices while spreading the new religion. That reframing created many of the Halloween traditions that people still participate in today. For example, the somewhat heavy concept of connecting to the dead was replaced with the more lighthearted idea of telling the future. Bobbing for apples, for example, became popular as a fortune-telling game. Apples would be selected to represent all of a woman's suitors, and the guy, aka apples she ended up biting into, would supposedly represent her future husband. In fact, Halloween previously posed a huge, albeit rather suspicious, matchmaking opportunity for young women in the 19th century. Celebrating your beloved dead. This is the time. Put up an altar to your ancestors. What does that mean? It means maybe just putting some pictures of your deceased relatives up. Lighting candles. That's what we do. There's some beautiful rituals we do on Samhain and Samhain Eve in the pagan community. 
And many places now have big, beautiful public rituals. Otherwise, do your own at home. It's time to celebrate the dead, the ancestors, put up pictures, do candles. The offerings of food and goods to protect themselves from spirits and ancestral ghosts became offerings of food and drink to the poor, displays of generosity and goodwill. And the tricks and pranks attributed to otherworldly and evil spirits manifested themselves in the spirits of the saints. Another popular All Hallows Eve ritual was mirror gazing, also known as scrying. People hope to catch a vision of their future by looking into the mirror. Children would also go door to door asking for soul cakes, a treat similar to biscuits. Soul cakes originated as part of the All Souls Day holiday on November 2nd, yep, a third holiday, but eventually became a part of Halloween night as the concept evolved into trick or treating. The candy grabbing concept also became mainstream in the US in the early to mid 1900s. Halloween obviously remains a popular holiday in America today, but it actually almost didn't make it across the Atlantic. The Puritans were disapproving of the holiday's pagan roots, so they didn't take part in the celebrations. But once Irish and Scottish immigrants began to arrive in America in greater numbers, the holiday made its way in. The very first American colonial Halloween celebrations featured large public parties to commemorate the upcoming harvest, tell ghost stories, sing, and dance. The pagan turned Christian practices of dressing up in costumes playing pranks and handing out offerings have evolved into popular traditions even for those who may not believe in otherworldly spirits or saints. Magic is everywhere. Just look at the calendar now and then. <laughs>